Australia's E7A Wedgetail has become one of the most unexpected strategic success stories in modern air power. Not only because it redefined airborne early warning for the Royal Australian Air Force, but because it compelled the United States Air Force to follow Australia's lead. For decades, Australia relied on the United States for high-end combat aircraft, sensors, and command and control systems. Today, the relationship has shifted in a subtle but historic way. The United States is now buying an Australian-born system to fill one of its most critical operational gaps. This reversal highlights the pace of technological change in the Indo-Pacific, the growing sophistication of Australian defense capability, and the shared urgency created by the rise of the People's Liberation Army across the region. The success of the Wedgetail must be understood within its original context. Australia embarked on its airborne early warning and control program in the late 1990s, at a time when most of the world still viewed the American E3 Sentry as the undisputed benchmark of airborne surveillance. The Royal Australian Air Force wanted a system optimized not for European airspace or Cold War scenarios, but for the maritime heavy, electronic, warfare intensive environment of the Indo Pacific. The result was the E 7A, built on the Boeing 737 airframe, equipped with the multi role electronically scanned array radar, and tailored specifically for dispersed operations across long distances. By the mid 2010s, Australia had not only fielded the platform successfully, but had validated it in real operations across the Middle East and the Indo-Pacific. The platform matured in an environment dominated by rapidly expanding Chinese air and naval power, which forced the Royal Australian Air Force to treat Wedgetail as both a sensor and a strategic command asset. The contrast with the American experience was stark. The United States Air Force continued relying on the E-3 Sentry a system built on an aging Boeing 707 frame with a mechanically rotating radome. As great power competition intensified, the weaknesses of the E-3 became impossible to ignore. Availability rates declined as airframes aged. The radar struggled against modern jamming environments. Maintenance costs surged as parts became increasingly rare. Above all, the E-3 lacked the ability to seamlessly operate in a contested Indo-Pacific battle space shaped by long-range Chinese missiles, electronic warfare suites, and stealth aircraft. American commanders repeatedly identified airborne surveillance as a growing vulnerability in a hypothetical conflict in the Western Pacific. When Washington examined options for replacing the E-3, the verdict became unavoidable. Australia had already built the platform the United States needed. This is why the United States Air Force made the decision to purchase its first E-7s, with a long-term plan to acquire more than 20 units. The first tranche includes two aircraft, aimed based on the Royal Australian Air Force configuration, but upgraded with new mission systems enhanced computing architecture, and growth capacity for future sensors. The cost is measured in billions of United States dollars, but the decisive factor is time. Because Australia had already demonstrated the aircraft in theater, the United States avoided a decade of development and prototyping. Instead, it effectively imported a mature capability and bought years of operational advantage. In the context of rising tensions around Taiwan and the South China Sea, shaving years off a critical capability gap has strategic consequences. The technical reasons behind American adoption are equally important. The multi-role electronically scanned array radar offers true 360-degree coverage without requiring a rotating dome, meaning the aircraft can switch modes instantly and track hundreds of targets across the air, sea, and land domains 
simultaneously. The electronically steered beam allows rapid sector focus, giving commanders the ability to prioritize fast-moving threats. Because the system sits on a Boeing 737 airframe, the wedge tail is easier to maintain, simpler to station at dispersed airfields, and cheaper to operate than older airborne warning and control platforms. It also integrates seamlessly with American data links, enabling combined operations in a way that much of Europe's aging fleet cannot match. For the Indo-Pacific, where long distances and multi-axis threats dominate, these features make the wedge tail particularly suitable for American concepts of operation. There is also a deeper operational logic. United States planners increasingly see the Indo-Pacific as a theater where command and control resilience may determine the outcome of a conflict. Because China invests heavily in jamming, data link interference, and long-range anti-air missiles, airborne command platforms must be agile, difficult to detect, and capable of handling enormous sensor loads. The wedge tail was shaped by precisely this environment. The Royal Australian Air Force refined its doctrine through years of operations in the Middle East, then adjusted its tactics for Pacific surveillance, maritime strike support, and integrated air defense roles. The United States benefits directly from these doctrinal lessons. By training alongside Australia in exercises such as Cope North and Pacific Edge, American crews inherit a decade of operational experience that Australia accumulated through necessity. For Australia, American adoption of the wedge tail is more than a diplomatic milestone. It is recognition of a growing industrial and technological capacity. The E-7A program supports domestic jobs, long-term partnerships with Boeing Defence Australia, and a pipeline of future upgrades. It pushes Australia further into the centre of the Five Eyes sensor fusion ecosystem, where data from aircraft, satellites and naval platforms is shared in increasingly integrated networks. It reinforces Australia's role as a strategic hub, particularly as the United States expands its posture across northern Australia through the United States Force Posture Initiatives. In any future Indo-Pacific crisis, wedge-tail aircraft may operate interchangeably from American and Australian bases, providing a joint sensor web capable of tracking Chinese naval task groups and coordinating allied responses. The significance of the wedge-tail is also geopolitical. At a time when China builds its own large airborne early warning aircraft and expands radar coverage across the South China Sea, the United States and Australia are reinforcing their opposite model, flexible, rapidly deployable airborne command centers able to orchestrate complex operations across vast distances. The addition of American E-7s creates a distributed fleet whose combined coverage is far harder for China to suppress. Because the aircraft are based on a civilian airframe, they can also operate from a wide range of commercial airports across partner nations if required, complicating any adversary's targeting calculus. In this sense, the wedge tail strengthens deterrence not only through capability, but through unpredictability and geographic flexibility. There is a broader pattern emerging that goes beyond the aircraft itself. The United Kingdom has also chosen the E-7 as its next airborne early warning platform. Other partners in Asia are evaluating it as well. The system therefore represents a wider strategic shift, a movement away from legacy Cold War designs toward highly modular, electronically steered sensor platforms optimized for contemporary multi-domain warfare. Australia's early investment placed it at the leading edge of this shift, and the United States' decision confirms that judgment. As future upgrades to the radar, mission system, and artificial intelligence-enabled sensor fusion proceed under AUKUS Pillar 2, 
both countries will continue to shape how airborne command platforms evolve over the next generation. For analysts seeking to understand the United States-Australia alliance, Lunderski, Mumbasik and Adeswashtins, the Wedgetail serves as a symbol of the changing balance of expertise within the partnership. Australia remains heavily reliant on American submarines, missiles, and stealth aircraft, yet the relationship is increasingly reciprocal. The E-7A shows that Australia can innovate in ways even major powers must acknowledge. It demonstrates that alliances are strongest when partners contribute complementary strengths rather than simply follow a single dominant actor. It reinforces the perception among other Indo-Pacific states that Australia is not merely a forward operating base for American forces, but a country capable of shaping allied air power architecture. As we continue exploring advanced defense programs on this channel, a brief note for viewers. Our team has recently launched a new project called Latin Sentinel, dedicated to covering defense developments in Brazil, Venezuela, and the wider South American region. If you are interested in how emerging powers outside the Indo-Pacific are shaping the global military landscape, Latin Sentinel offers a concise, analytical perspective grounded in the same seriousness and discipline as this channel. Supporting it helps us expand our multi-regional coverage and deliver deeper strategic insights across different theaters.